hey welcome back my name is sushant sutish and i am an instructor for this az900 examination series this is a walk through model in this walk through we are going to create a virtual machine after creating the virtual machine i will teach you how to connect to your virtual machine in azure and then within that virtual machine we are going to install a web server role and we are going to test the functionality of that vm so let's go and find out how that is been done so now we are in our azure portal to access the azure portal is super simple you go to portal.azure.com and you sign in with your azure credentials once you are inside the azure portal you can go to your all services and you can type in virtual machine that will take you into the place where you can create virtual machine as you can see that i have couple of virtual machines already if you would like to create a new one just create add a new virtual machine make sure to select the subscription if you have multiple subscription that can be tricky uh, and create a new resource group or select an existing resource group so i'm going to use az900 as the resource group for the entire walkthrough so that i can delete the resources after we create that and provide the name for your virtual machine and select the region where you would like to host this virtual machine as well we learned about the availability options so let's not pick any availability right now you have multiple options for image type you can have a linux machine or a windows machine i chose a windows server 2019 and you have different type of size or vm family size as well so i'm going to stick to the default uh, recommended vm series which is d2s v3 which gives me two core and 8 gb ram and uh, by default it gave me a username if you want you can leave at that username or you can modify the username by giving something what you like and uh, provide a strong password so that you can use this password and username to log in to your virtual machine uh, by default there are a couple of ports which is allowed but if you don't want any other port to be connected to your azure then you can disable that in this walk through we need to open the http port for to test the web server and uh, we need the rdp port as well because rdp is how we are going to connect to the vm um if you happen to have software assurance you can enable that uh, by default there won't be any disk but you can always come to the next page and add a disk options like standard and uh, premium disk are available so i'm going to use a standard ssd which is not going to be super expensive um i'm going to leave the rest of the tab rest of the options by default because when you create a virtual machine by default the network are created for you so you don't have to worry about creating a vnet creating a subnet creating a public ip etc so i'm going to leave rest of the details as it is because it is not that important for us to learn all of that in the azure fundamentals course as your fundamental scores expect you to have a high level understanding about what these services are how to create that etc if you would like to pursue further and dive deep into it there are other courses for you things like uh, examination course like uh, az104 uh, az500 is where you dive deep into it so now submit the deployment uh, when you create a virtual machine it might take some time probably a minute or two is what it required to create your first virtual machine because under the hood what what is happening at the moment is based on the information what you have given you have if you remember you have given the resource group you have given the details like where you would like to host the virtual machine the location the type of the family of the virtual machine um and you would like to activate the rdp port and enable the http port as well so this arm template has captured all this information in a template template form and this arm template is talking to the azure uh rest apis and making sure that all the information what is captured during that process is executed so as you can see that our ip address is been created now uh the vnet is been created now the nsg which is required for the inbound and outbound port is been created now now it is started provisioning the vm again if you feel like i am providing lot more information which is 
difficult for you to handle, don't worry. Bear with me for few more modules because I'm going to take you through each and every component in a very simplistic format. So you will be able to understand why IP address is required, what is a VNet, what is a subnet, and uh, why you need the compute uh, to be created in this format. Uh, what, what do you mean by an Azure VM family size, etc.? So I will take you through that process anyways. Looks like we almost completed the whole deployment process. The final step out of the virtual machine deployment process is to create the VM. So the deployment is completed. Now I can go and expand the deployment details to find out all the things what it is deployed, or I can click on the resource. It will straight away take you into the VM. So if you remember, the VM we created is called my VM. That's the name we have given. Under the overview tab is where we can see other details like where it is being hosted, uh, what sort of an operating system it is, things like that. I can download the RDP connection trigger from the portal itself. So I can click on connect and this gives me three options, RDP, SSH or Bastion. Usually you will not open your RDP connection or expose it to internet uh, because either you use a Jumpbox server or a site-to-site -site VPN or Azure Bastion to connect your VMs. Now in this instance, because it's a test VM and I'm going to delete the VM afterward, I'm going to use RDP. You have public IP address. I'm going to download the RDP file and it is going to give me an option to log into the VM as well. The funny thing is I use two different monitor or one for the recording for this demonstration and another for running the recording software. Every time, because the other one is the primary monitor, every time I launch something, it goes to the other window. So I have to drag and drop from the other window to the recording screen every time. Uh, it drives me crazy, but it's funny at the same time as well. So I'm gonna give the name of the virtual machine. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna give the name, uh, username and the password, which we use to create this virtual machine. And uh, ignore that certificate error. And uh, the next step is where you can connect to your virtual machine for the first time. So I'm going to connect to the virtual machine. I think it is already start establishing the connection. So let's see if I can snap this window to the recording screen. It is not allowing me to. Yes. So finally, I was able to snap this uh, server. Instance, so what you're seeing right now is it is setting up the profile for the first time. So you have your brand new Azure virtual machine up and running in Azure. So you have seen how simple it is. So we hardly took like close to three to four minutes to get your first virtual machine. All you had to do was give you details like name of your VM, you selected the number of core and the RAM you record for the VM. And basically that's about it. And once you're given that, then you prepared all the details in a template and you deployed the submission. And the whole deployment process took approximately uh, maybe one to two minutes. Within that one to two minutes, you got a brand new VM. And in that VM, now you can perform any sort of task what you would like to perform within the VM. So I can uh, go and install an application or I can go and install a web role, etc. So for this task, what we are going to do now is we are going to install a web server role and we're going to test that that is working or not. So anyway, you learned about the Azure virtual machine creation part. So I'm going to launch the Azure PowerShell. Uh, let's see if I can open it in an administrative privilege or credential. So I'm going to type in PowerShell. And I'm going to launch uh, as run as administrator. Then once I am inside the Azure PowerShell module, I'm going to install the web server feature for the virtual machine by running a command. If you're wondering what sort of a command I'm using, I'm going to write a blog, which will give you all the details like what's the command like, and you can follow the exercise as well. But again, you don't have to. That's the beautiful thing about AZ900. If you don't like to try it yourself, you just ignore this part. Just look at this walkthrough. That's 
that will give you plenty enough information about what it has been happening under the hood. You just need to know the high level knowledge for this AZ900 course. You don't have to dive deep into it. If you would like to go deeper, then you just need to learn AZ104. So I'm gonna execute this command. So when you execute this command, what it is happening is it's gonna um, run the web server role um, in this virtual machine. Then so that we can go outside of the VM and we can test this web server role as well. After this command runs successfully, um, you will get a value as true because that is what we are waiting for. You don't need to restart uh, this virtual machine to install this web role. That is super cool as well. So otherwise we would waste some more time for this server to come back online as well. And I want to keep all these videos short and crisp. Sometimes because of all these moving moments, uh, I probably would have to extend beyond 10 minutes. But ideally, I would like to keep compressed all the content within 10 minutes because I don't want to take more than 10 minutes of your time to go through each module. So we are at the end of the installation of this task. So once you install, once the installation is complete, I can go back to the uh, portal and I can show you, yeah, looks like the installation is complete. Now I can go back to the portal and I can open another uh, instance and copy the server detail. So let's, let's go back to the portal now. And within this portal, I'm going to try to find out the public IP address or the FQDN or the DNS name for the server. So I copied the public IP address. And let's go to a tab and see if we can connect to the web server from this public IP address. Voila. So now you have learned how to create a virtual machine and how to create a web server role within the server. And now we have a web server role running in the server and you are connecting to that server from your on-premises as well. So that's how you create a virtual machine and connect to your virtual machine and then install your own applications. In this instance, we learned about installing a web server role and we tested as well. A note, to avoid additional cost, you need to remove the resource group and delete all the resources. In the next video, we're going to learn about what is container services. So I will see you on the next video. Till then, take care.